Ordinarily, I'd start talking about the reason for trading pullbacks and why they give us such a strong edge against our competition. But if I did that, most of you wouldn't care and you'd jump straight into thinking, you know, I've got three minutes to spare. How can, I, how can this make me money? So that's what I'm going to show you first. And then we'll work backwards for those of you that want to know why it makes us money and more importantly, better traders. Okay. So we're going to talk about qualifying a trade before entering a, uh, a buy sell order. So we've got, we, we actually qualify our trades in steps. Step one is, do we have a strong potential for exhaustion? Weakness always follows strength. So if we measure strength, we can anticipate how long that strength will or can possibly last. We use this information to help us enter into short-term trading positions while others use it to help them to scale out of longer-term situations. You can actually use our entire trading system and flop it over. And instead of using it to enter pullback trades, you can actually use it if you like to trade longer term trend trades. You can flip it over and use it to help you scale from those trades. So what we're looking at here is constantly measuring to find weakness in a downtrend to determine the weakness where the sellers are getting weak inside of a downtrend. When we can anticipate strength, weakness is going to follow. When weakness follows, we almost always get a pullback. Okay? So when we use our indicators to show us to measure these weaknesses in a downtrend, it's going to look like this. Our indicators alert to strong exhaustion potential. So we put our indicators on the charts to give us a heads up to allow us to get ready for the trade. I'm going to show you a trade setup called a speed tick trade setup. This is the second pullback trade that I started trading. It requires that we have a major support or resistance behind our trade as a safety net in case the trade tried to go against us. This setup we traded for many years prior to enhancing that setup, and I'll show you that setup also. I, uh, we traded this for many years, but I still wanted to find more and better setups. So let's take a look at this. What I want to know is, is the smart money currently manipulating the bar, the, 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 the current bar? That's what we're measuring. That's what we need to know. Okay, so we want to look at the inside of smart money and we're going to look inside the exchange to see how fast orders are being processed. Okay, and I'm going to talk to you about this in the next video when we talk about our indicators. So this is our speed tick setup and I'm going to look inside and we're going to zoom in. All right, again, like I said, it requires major support and resistance and, and that's our safety net. What we're looking for here is a strong push you can see that with these indicators. I'm going to show you these indicators in the next video. These indicators are showing us that there's a strong push followed by a really strong or fast set of orders being processed through the market. These are not orders that are resting orders. These aren't uh, you know, book orders. These are actually processed orders. And they are processed through the market very, very quickly. Price comes down, slams into this support. We get another indicator here. I'll tell you about this in the next video. This bar closes. This bar opens above this line. We put a buy order on here. We're going to buy at the open of this bar. We're anticipating that price is going to pull back at least to some degree. And then what happens after that? We have no idea. We don't really have a strong sense that it's going to keep going. What's more likely, as you, that those of you that are trend traders, is that it's going to pull back and then it's going to go and continue that trend. All right, here's another speed tick trade setup. Looks just like the other one, doesn't it? Strong push down. We have indicators, two different indicators on these on these bars. We got another indicator here slammed into this support. This bar opened above, took some heat, but ultimately ended up heading in the right direction. Again, strong push down, slammed into support. This bar opens. Off it goes. This is our speed tick trade setup. The secret is learning how to enter on the open of this bar. Understanding when to enter is easy. It just takes a little bit of practice to open as soon as this bar opens because you're going to be ready. 
you started getting ready up here because you started seeing strength. And the, the stronger it gets, the more imminent the exhaustion. So we're going to put a buy order on the open of the bar after the speed tick. So let's go look at step three for another trade setup. Step three is we're going to add divergence. What we want to know is has momentum shifted? Even though price is moving in one direction, has momentum shifted? For those of you that don't know what divergence is, here's a, a good example. Maybe price is setting lower lows, but the divergence oscillator is setting higher lows. Or maybe price is setting higher highs, but the momentum indicator is setting lower highs. Very easy to figure out what's going to happen next when you have divergence. Price almost always wants to catch up with momentum. Okay, that's why divergence is so powerful. So we're going to look here that we have same setup, but now we're adding another layer of confluence to our trade setups. We're going to buy on the open of the bar with the divergent signal. The divergent signal prints on the very first tick of that bar that, that opens. This is actually called a speed flash or speed MAC trade setup. We have several different divergence indicators. We've actually taken all of that information and all of that confluence and combined it into a single indicator that we call a rock star. Now you'll notice we have two different color rock stars. There's different ways of qualifying a rock star trade setup. When we have a an area of accumulation of di or distribution, there's really nothing for us to do. Price is channeling. We're not looking to take any trades in this area. Price may drop out of this area, maybe just in a single bar, a short drop, but we're still inside or just barely outside of a channel does not give me a strong sense of exhaustion setting in, right? After the other charts I showed you, you can see the strong push. So there's no real strong sense of exhaustion. Because of that, we printed a white rock star. Now in our trade room, it's black because the chart background is lighter in the trade room than it is here. So I changed the color on this one. It's white for this background. So ordinarily, you might say, well, there's a rock star. Why aren't I trading it? I'm not trading it because that imminent exhaustion doesn't exist here. So I passed on that one. But that trade could still have qualified if I added support or resistance behind it to make that trade a little bit safer. So if we had a major line of, of support behind that trade and that bar opened with that rock star, I'm taking that trade. So that's one type of rock star trade setup. You see these three others here. All three of these qualify for what we call a naked rock star trade. It's naked because none of those have support behind them. That's what makes them naked. Okay. So we we take a lot of naked rock star trades that do not have support behind them. Why do we do that? Why do these qualify and the others didn't? Look how hard the price pushed down. Look how imminent exhaustion is. Price can't well, can just keep doing this. If you look at any trading chart, you'll notice that price will not continue to push. It has to slow down and retrace or pull back before it continues. It always has and it always will. All right, that concludes video two. Feel free to proceed to video three in the series to get started learning about second brain trading indicators that we used in our trade setups.